So what I love about this question is that it's looking at the relationship between the terms of your series and the partial sums and kind of going in a way that you don't usually go. So in this case, we are given the formula to calculate all of the different partial sums, but we have to come up with that general term of the series, right? Usually we call it, right, a sub n. So we're going to be looking for those a sub n's, right? So that if we're adding from 1 to infinity, the partial sums can be computed as the square root of n. So um, remember, so for instance, if I were to talk about s s sub 3, the third partial sum, that would be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3, okay? s sub n, okay? a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus, I don't know how many terms because I don't know what n is, and then we add that nth term and we're good, and that's the nth partial sum. Okay, so the way that I approach this one is really kind of a brute force. So I'm going to turn my desk here. I'm trying to keep the light from blinding us here. And I'm just going to make a quick little table and see if I can find that pattern. Okay. So I need n. I need to know what my s sub n is. And then I want to know what, the, um, what a good a value would be. Okay. So if n is 1, right, my partial sum is square root of 1. Well, that's just 1. And the first partial sum is just, right, the, well, the first term and the first partial sum are the same. Okay. So if n is 2, so then my first, or my second partial sum would be the square root of 2. So what would the a sub n term have to be? So that if I added 1 plus, so remember s sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Okay. So I know that s of 2 is square root 2, a sub 1 is 1. What does that tell me that a sub 2 has to be? Right? Square root 2 minus 1. So add those together, I get my um, s sub 2. Let's do it again. If n is 3, right, I get a square root of 3. So that means, right, I need whatever I have adding in here, right, so s sub 3, that square root of 3 is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. Okay. What does a sub 3 have to be? So these guys add away, and it looks like, so now I have square root 3 equals square root 2 plus a sub 3. So a sub 3 is going to be the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2. Okay, I'm starting to see a pattern. Let's do one more. Let's make sure. So if n is 4, s sub 4 is the square root of 4. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is a 2. Don't write a 2. You want to leave it um, as a square root of 4. Okay, so I'm going to sneak it right up in here. So then my right, s sub 4, right, a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4. So we want that to equal the square root of 4. So a sub 1 is 1, plus a sub 2, oh, that's a minus 1, plus a sub 3, plus a sub 4, right? We're looking for a sub 4. So cancel everybody who cancels. You should have positives and negatives of everybody. So I have the square root of 4 equals the square root of 3 plus a sub 4. That means, right, a sub 4 is equal to the square root of 4 minus the square root of 3. Of course, I, right, that should go right up here. OK, do we see the pattern? Are we ready to write down a generic a sub n term? All right, I think I've got it. So this is going to equal, let's make sure they match up here, um, square root of n minus the square root of n minus 1. So as long as n is greater than 1, I'm going to get, so if n is 1, I'll get square root 1 minus square root 0. That gives me the right place. If n is 2, I get square root of 2 minus 2 minus 1, 1. It looks good. Okay, so there right, is how we could write the series right, that leads to those partial sums that have a sum of the square root of n. Now, you might be asked, does this series converge? Well, right, you, it's a 
telescoping series, right? We keep um, losing um, those intermediate terms each time. But since our nth term does not go to zero, this series, sorry, our nth, right here, our nth term does not go to zero. So this series does not converge. 